Well, good morning, Messiah families. This week matters. In so many ways, God is speaking to you this week. In this time of fear and uncertainty, we seek hope. If only there was someone to cling to, someone to bridge the gap between us and God, someone to bring order out of the chaos. This week matters. This week, we remember the last week of Jesus' life. This was the week in all of human history that God proved his power over life and death, over the sin and the grave. Today, we are going to focus on servanthood. Let's read from John 13. I'll, you can pause me while you grab your Bible. I'm just going to read verses 1 through 5 out of the New Living Translation. And I encourage you to go back and read verses 1 through 17 again on your own as a family when you use your church in a bag kit. John 13, verse 1. Before the Passover celebration, Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave this world and return to his Father. He had loved his disciples during this ministry on earth, and now he loved them to the very end. It was time for supper, and the devil had already prompted Judas to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had given him all authority over everything that had come from God and would return to God. So he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist, and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that he had around them. There are many names for Christians in the New Testament, brother, sister, believer, soldier, ambassador, disciples, sons and daughters, and saints. But one of the primary words is servant or bond servant. The books of Romans, Philippians, James, and 2 Peter all begin with a reference to the writers being servants or bond servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. These early church leaders were simply following the teaching and the examples of Jesus. Unfortunately, many Christians aren't interested in being servants. Many Christians, like those in the world, are most interested in beauty or bronze, brains or bucks, or power, prestige and position. Our thoughts and actions and even our prayers center around fulfilling our desires instead of serving others. We fight for the highest position or the most impressive title. But Jesus, he modeled something completely different. In Philippians 2, the writer says, Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took a humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him into the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord for the glory of God the Father. Now in spite of his popularity, Jesus never sought earthly power, position, or prestige. Our Lord came into this world as a servant, and Jesus remained committed first and foremost to offer himself as a servant. Charles Stanley says, if you and I are to make the impact in life upon others that we should, if we are to fulfill God's purpose and plan for our lives, if we are to reap the maximum blessing that God has prepared for us, we too must develop a spirit of servant. And our actions must be the actions of a servant. A servant who realizes that Jesus is not only our Savior, but he is the master of our lives. As believers, we should follow the example of Jesus, who was equal with God, but humbled himself and became man. The Bible clearly teaches that the way to true greatness is through serving Christ. Jesus said in John 12, anyone who loves their life will lose it, and while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. The message version makes this hates their life thing a bit clearer. Anyone who holds on to life just as it is destroys that life. 
But if you let it go, reckless in your love, you will have it forever, real and eternal. Have you heard the story of the cracked pot? A water bear had two large pots, each hung on the ends of a pole that he carried across his neck. One of the pots had a crack in it, while the other pot was perfect and always delivered a full portion of water. At the end of a long walk from the stream to the house, the cracked pot arrived only half full. For two years, this went on daily with the bear delivering only one, half, one and a half pots full of water to his house. Of course, the perfect pot was proud of its accomplishments, but the poor cracked pot was ashamed of its own imperfections and miserable that it was only able to accomplish just half of what it had been made to do. After two years of what it perceived to be bitter failure, it spoke to the water bearer one day by the stream. I am shamed of myself and I want to apologize to you. I have been able to deliver only half of my load because of this crack in my side that causes the water to leak out all the way back to your house. Because of my flaws, you have to do all of this work and you don't get full value from your efforts, the pot said. The bear smiled at the pot. Have you not noticed that there are flowers on your side of the path, but not on the other pot's side? That's because I have always known about your flaw, and I only planted flower seeds on your side of the path. Every day while we walk back, you've watered them. For two years, I have been able to pick these beautiful flowers to decorate the master's table. Without you being just the way you are, there would not be this beauty to grace this house. What is biblical servanthood all about? It's an act of loving service performed in the power of the Holy Spirit to meet the temporal and spiritual needs of those around us, not looking for recognition, but rather leaving the result to God. When we, as followers of Jesus, finally realize that our calling is to serve, not merely to seek our own interest, then we will have an irresistible impact on our friends, families, on our neighbors and colleagues, and on our community. In your church in a bag kit, there are some nail files to give someone in the home a manicure or a pedicure, or you could actually choose to wash somebody's feet. Either way, any of these actions illustrate servanthood. This week matters. This week, we invite you today to pray for your quarantine family and then ask God what you can do to serve him this week. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow.